Hello and welcome to the University of Law podcast. To celebrate Entrepreneurship Week, we're talking to ULaw alumni Jonathan Lee. Jonathan studied the GDL and LPC at our Guildford campus and graduated in 2004. In 2013, he started his own business, the Jonathan Lee Network. Today, we'll be discussing his experience of owning a business and what his plans are for the future, as well as giving advice to budding entrepreneurs. Hi Jonathan, welcome to the University of Law podcast and thank you for taking the time out to talk to us today. Could you start by telling us a little bit about yourself and what you studied? Yeah, sure. Um, I studied or I started studying economics and politics at Bristol University. Uh, eventually graduated with a degree in politics and sociology. Got to the end of uh, university, was trying to work out what to do. For some reason, decided law was the way to go. Signed up to the GDL. Um, did that uh, and then towards the end of that or just before the LPC started um, I got the uh, secure the training contract with Clyde & Co who, who uh, sponsored effectively the, the LPC year um, at Guildford. I'm now a uh, practicing corporate and commercial solicitor with about 13 years post-qualification experience. First started working on a self-employed basis under the umbrella of another firm six years ago or so. Can you tell us a little bit about your company, the Jonathan Lee Network? Uh, I'll start off with a bit of background. So as I say, I started off as a freelance self-employed consultant solicitor. Um, and at the start, I didn't really have much work or any clients. So I needed to quite quickly generate a bit of a, a client base. And I had an interest before that. And part of the reason that drove me to start working for myself is an interest in web marketing. So I produced a website that with a lot of legal content on it. And that's what, sort of where the, the name, the network came from because I had in mind to be able to refer uh, work to a network of other self-employed lawyers and small law firms. I thought that would be an easier way to grow a business in the legal sector rather than having all the overheads and the costs of starting to operate your own regulated firm from the outset. Within my first year of being self-employed, start to produce more leads than I could manage myself. So as well as doing my own fee earning work uh, alongside that, I effectively started a matching service with a network of other self-employed lawyers and law firms. I started off in London. Um, after two years, I moved out of London to Mid-Sussex. I thought it would be uh, offered a more attractive location from where to build and, and future-proof a business. Even in London, in-person meetings were becoming a rarity and um, being based in an expensive location seemed to be a bad decision for, for the business. So being, being a one-man band with no capital meant that progressing to employing people and running an SRA regulated firm took, took longer than I would have liked. However, two years ago, I moved into a small office and hired my first employee. And then in April 2019, we started trading as our own SRA regulated firm. And our, our turnover has now um, grown sixfold over that two year period. And we're now developing a hybrid bricks and mortar stroke virtual firm where our busy central retained team of employed fee earners can work or increasingly work seamlessly with a, a remotely based network of self-employed solicitors with different specialisms that can quite nicely dovetail with the central team and work, work together on, on matters as well as the self-employed solicitors bringing their own work and doing it under our umbrella as well, a bit like how I started off a few years ago. So what was the original plan for the business? Was there a niche in the market you knew you could fill? I knew I could be successful with the web marketing aspect, hence again why I chose the word network partly in the first instance. Business boils down to individuals and their, and their networks. Um, but anyway, even though I was uh, matching a lot of work and referring work to other people, it proves to be very difficult to make money on the basis of a matching service when you're taking effectively small or trying to small commissions 10-15% on work you're referring and then your process of doing that you're losing the connection you're trying your best to persuade someone to go, go elsewhere and then there and if you are successful doing that you're losing the connection the relationship but it was a good way with to, as I say to start off with with no no capital partly as a result of running events at Google campus when it opened when I was employed by uh, a small firm that happened to be based in Shoreditch um, and Google Campus opened around the corner and it was very easy to book and use when it first opened so that was a great way of getting to know people in the, in the startup scene and I saw through doing that that small businesses and startups were underserved and there was 
a mismatch between uh, law firm, particularly big law firm culture and how startups operate and what they're really looking for in legal support. So I started not really with any clients per se, but with a lot, a few good relationships and connections and an understanding of the particularly the tech startup scene that I was looking to better serve and had ideas of how, um, how that could be done better than, than most other law firms. So you've gone from being self-employed solicitor working from home to being managing director of a company whose turnover has increased sixfold over the last 21 months. How did you make it happen? I built a good solid client base and relationships with referral sources and contacts and people who knew me who knew what I did, was doing and wanted to work with me. So um, I knew that as soon as I did get round to being able to hire someone, there was, um, yeah, hopefully it wouldn't uh, take too much effort to just keep saying yes to things and, and be able to generate enough work to keep, keep us busy. Um, but again, in that, in that period, building the website, it, which consistently generates new leads. Um, and then I think just generally with the people you do hire, the people you work with generally, creating a, a positive and supportive culture and environment, but uh, at the same time also giving junior fee earners a high degree of responsibility and delegating as much as possible and in the process creating efficient workflows and ways of doing things. Um, and then over that period we've been able to move into um, a bigger office and we've reinvested our cash flow in, in different ways. So hopefully that rate of growth can now be maintained or perhaps even increased. Did you go to anyone for advice on starting your own business? I think I always had it in mind um, as something to do. I think that was one of the reasons why I chose to do law in the first place. I was attracted by working in the city but I also wanted to do something um, whereby I have the relevant skills base and experience to be able to start and run my own business, small business. But in 2009, after working in the city a bit, I went and worked, uh, sort of had enough really. I went to work at a law firm in Cornwall for two years where it was a different environment, left to my own devices effectively um, and, and maintaining and building uh, my own client base down there. So. Um, that experience is very different from working in London and gave me the belief and desire to start my own practice. Um, also while in Cornwall there are lots of people I met there in their 20s and 30s who were self-employed and building their own businesses um, and also when I was there I went to this conference called Light Minds in Exeter where I met loads of entrepreneurs and people doing interesting things with social media and digital technologies um, and just being in that sort of environment surrounding by the, surrounded by those kind of people gives you sort of more of an idea and belief and wanting to do um, your own thing. Was it daunting taking on employees for the first time? It is daunting to take on employees and you maybe have to be prepared just to have a little bit of a rough ride at the beginning but it, it, yeah, looking back on it, it's like the advice I always give to people is try to, make, try to hire your first employee as soon as possible because that will make the the biggest impact um, on, on your business, having someone who can work with you every day in the same office. Earlier on you sort of mentioning that you were feeding out work to people, how were they finding out about you? How were you advertising your business? Yeah, the website really is, is producing quality, insightful and useful content. Um, still remains our most effective way of, of advertising our business and creating useful connections and relationships. Um, also combining that with social media and connecting with a lot of people on LinkedIn and Facebook as well. Yeah, however now we've got a bit of a marketing budget and we're keen to generate more local work so we started to spend more money on things like having our own stand at conferences, uh, sponsored signage on a busy local roundabout, uh, adverts in local publications. Yeah, different ways, constantly looking to make connections and build relationships with people, but the, the website still remains the, the best way of, of generating um, new leads and clients. Um, and for example, yeah, still the best uh, or the biggest fee generating work we've got remains um, from people who have initially got in touch through the website and then we've gone on to um, form good ongoing relationships with them over um, some cases several years and very often without ever having met them in person. What was the toughest thing about starting your own business and how did you overcome it? 
the loneliness and worry about where the work will come from. I made sure I regularly got out and about and organised a number of meetings with potential clients and introducers, as well as going to networking events um, alongside producing new content for the website. So you may not have a, a big volume of, of, of work coming through, but um, that's quite nice because it gives you lots of time and opportunities to go out and about and do marketing activities and networking, which now I'd like to do more of, but um, I'm sort of chained to the desk more with, with client work. And one thing I did in that first year is I also started my own event series called Pivotal Tribes, um, where for the first year we would regularly get over 100 people at each event at Google Campus. Um, which was something to look forward to each month and I made some good friends and clients from, from doing this as well as getting to know the um, Shoreditch startup scene so you combine that with things like events and meetings that you've got to look forward to then um, that, that's a good way of um, having a nice balance and keeping you going. On the flip side of that what's been the best thing about having your own business? I think initially in the first year I was working from a one bedroom flat near Peckham in South East London. Um, it, yes, I remember just, it was very satisfying that, that what you were doing was working and you were actually starting to earn a living. Um, that, was, that was quite a nice feeling, even though, you, even though you, it's very small scale and you know you've got a long way to go. Um, so you then know that if you keep going and you play your cards right, you'll increasingly benefit from running your own business. Just yeah, having the freedom and control over your life and um, seeing end results of the decisions you make. Um, and, and now that we've got employees, it's, it's satisfying seeing people um, individually and the team as a whole develop and, uh, and as we advance the, uh, the business further. And what do you attribute your success to? Being personable and positive able to get on well with different people, being effectively client friendly <laughs> in summary. But um, yeah, I think I've always had a competitive nature and desire to give clients a good experience. And I think that competitive nature and desire to do well is sort of fed better running my own business. I always felt quite frustrated working with or for other people where you're not really um, where it's sometimes that those who are most politically connected or who shout the loudest uh, um, uh, the people who tend to overrule you or make the decisions and you tend to lose interest as a result um, I think also tend to be particularly working for startups and small businesses this helps but um, you, you get used to doing, being more like this but um, I think we or I or we as a whole now uh, are quite pragmatic and com commercial compared, compared to other law firms. I think we get to the nub of the situation quickly without wasting time on superfluous details. Um, and also, yeah, generally, whether it's clients or uh, employees or other self employed consultants you're working with, whoever it might be, um, able to, being able to manage people and situations in a, in a calm, uh, good humoured style while pushing things along to successful conclusions in a careful yet incisive manner. Um, I think that those are all things that, that help, help someone be successful and uh, build a business. So what are your company's goals and where do you hope to be in 10 years? Being able to offer somewhere great to work for people. So it's very rewarding where people uh, approach you and they're interested in wanting to work for your firm as an employee. So. Yeah, whether that's attracting employees, um, wanting a decent career ladder, particularly junior solicitors frustrated with progress elsewhere, or um, self-employed consultant solicitors who want to partner with us and uh, have sort of seen how I've developed uh, myself being a self-employed solicitor to, to growing the firm. Um, and then in, in the process together, we can increasingly give clients um, a better experience innovate and innovate along the way. So as to increase and improve the services and products um, we offer as, as we've been doing um, the last couple of years. Um, so yeah, I worked out earlier, if we, if we carry on with the same rate of growth we've managed over the last two years, then 10 years from now we'll be a company with a turnover in excess of £500 million, making us a bigger law firm than Slaughter may currently are. So um, I'm not sure that's possible and there are a lot of things that could go wrong along the way, so it might be that it's 
it's feasible to get to have that sort of initial rate of growth, but there are probably also lots of stumbling blocks once you get to a certain size and your overheads increase and the challenges increase, etc. Um, but in, in any case, as long as we keep doing the things the right way, um, trying to improve, then I think you know it's quite feasible feasible that we could be one of the UK's top 100 law firms in in 10 years' time, um, and that's probably a, a realistic fingers crossed goal to aim for. And um, what advice do you have for people who are starting their own businesses? Take out an office and hire an employee as soon as possible, which I wish I'd done sooner, but looking back, it's, it's just very difficult when it's just yourself and you've got so many other things to manage, just work alongside everything else that's going on in your life with family. And, um, you know, one year it was moving out of London, which took a lot of my time, another year it was um, buying a house, things like that. But um, if you can, yeah, settle an area and get a, an office and hire someone and that will make the biggest impact and, and don't be put off with a, by the risk of doing that, um, things, will, things will work out as long as you're attracting work in the first place. Um, also don't, don't feel that you have to be based in London or city even, um, a lot of people still think that's really necessary or required but the, I think the costs of doing that by far and away outweigh the benefits that you get. So yeah, don't give up too easily and be po- both um, persistent and patient. Um, don't be afraid to borrow money as well. That's another thing that um, I was uh, afraid of doing. But um, yeah, there's lots of low interest business loans, cash flow loans out there, um, and that could be paid off very quickly and easily once the business grows. So. Um, yeah, I think that would be a, a summary of my, my advice to people starting. That's great. Thank you so much for joining us today and taking the time out of talking to us. No problem. Lovely. Yeah, thanks for coming to visit. Thank you. For any U Law students interested in learning more about the Jonathan Lee Network, they offer two-week paid work placements at their Haywards Heath offices. Two U Law students who have completed work experience there have already gone on to become full-time employees. So if you're interested, send your CV and covering letter to the contact details available at www.jonathanlee.net. Thank you for joining us at the University of Law podcast and we look forward to speaking to you again soon.